this is going to be a guide for the uh, Castle Molecule Cyclone character. I'm just quickly going to go over the gems and all that, all that kind of stuff, you know. Many people have been interested in the build, and I'm actually going to revisit the build in the future. So, uh, yeah, I'm finally making a guide, and hopefully this is going to be useful to some of you guys out there. Because to me, it really feels like a really powerful melee build. You know, melee builds really have a problem with clear speed. This build was built to not have any issues with clear speed and Cyclone is just the perfect skill for it I feel but yeah uh, since the diary a lot of things have changed we went through evasion I picked up some more reduced mana to be able to run grace uh, we don't have the AoE anymore which is a little bit annoying but it doesn't reduce the clear speed too much um, the state of this character currently oh yeah and don't mind this please I just didn't want to spend one regret point okay um, the gear right now is not really worth much. I have a plus two weapon range, uh, Prismatic Eclipse, so nothing crazy, no triple white or anything like that. It's even one red socket, which is pretty bad, but you know, you should have three green here if you're gonna use something like this, but it's whatever. Uh, so this is my one weapon. The other weapon I'm using Hyons Fury. This is somewhat at the beginning of the league, um, so that's just what I've uh, what I've went with. Uh, you know, it's really, really cheap, really, really affordable, you don't have to look for it, and, uh, you know, anyone can get it, and it's a bad roll too, so, not that big of a deal, we have an Alpha Sal, uh, uh, Alpha Sal is getting reduced in price, at least on the Harker Leagues, but, uh, it's still worthwhile, I would say, well, it's necessary if you want to run the exact setup as I'm running, and then uh, I'm using a lightning coil. Lightning coil got nerfed, but it's not really it's not really that bad. Uh, so I still go with a lightning coil. This is an acrobatics evasion build at this point. So a lightning coil just really helps with those physical one shots. Uh, and altogether, this makes for a really tanky build. I currently have 12 12k evasion with no flask up, self self buffed with a level 17 grace. So. I feel I feel like that's pretty great, and you know you can pick up stuff like Revenge of the Haunted and just get a little bit more evasion. Uh, the skill tree is kind of in an awkward state right now, but the most of the traveling is is yeah well yeah all the traveling is pretty perfect right now in my opinion. Uh, you might decide to go in Air Force. You might decide to go Ash Frost and Storm. Like that was the biggest issue with not going through here and instead going through here. Like just. All of a sudden, Inner Force and Ash Frost and Storm are not efficient notes for us, so... That's kind of up in the air, up to personal preference, if you want your build to be more DPS, if you want to pick up some more life nodes, uh, up to you. Uh, this is kind of worth it, kind of not. It's worth it because of Berserking and Volpact. Uh, I feel like those nodes are great. And then when you calculate this, these nodes are actually efficient as well. The two weapon range is obviously huge, but we still count this as one point. We can count this as two points more than two points, more efficient than two points, so it's one travel node, and this is 12 attack speed, and we get uh, ignore all movement penalties from armor, so pretty big, we can count this as two nodes, so in essence, these travel nodes don't really exist, so I highly recommend going duelist, uh, it's just it's just worth it in my opinion. But uh, let's go over the skill gems, and then I'm going to run the map real quick, and try and keep this video short, as opposite to my typical videos that really aren't short. Uh, all right, I'm running Volhaze. Volhaze just really helps because uh, of the movement speed. We don't really need the attack speed when it comes to the damage. Uh, it is a big damage boost, but it's just you don't need it. Uh, however, the movement speed is pretty huge, so we're using a, currently a level 18 uh, Volhaze with increased duration. Highly recommend. In my helmet, I have a reduced mana, Wrath, Grace, and Anger. Uh, again, the Grace is level 17 because I've only started to use it not so long ago, and the other gems mostly are level 19. Uh, Herald of Vash, this is not necessary. I used to run Herald of Vash before I started running Grace, but at this point, uh, I could take this out, but it's kind of whatever. Uh, and then Reduce Mana and Herald of Ice. Herald of Ice, we obviously still use a huge damage booster for our build because we shatter pretty much and freeze everything, so it's, it's crazy, crazy good. Uh, Warlord's Mark, Curse and Hit, Reduced Mana, Herald of Thunder is another setup. This is obviously what Curse is for us. If you could implement somehow like a double curse setup, that would be really cool. Because Elemental Weakness is just so strong for these Elemental builds. But, you know, this is good enough. 
this is what I'm using. Uh, the Warlord's Mark uh, helps a lot with the Fizz mitigation. On top of it, there's there's Mana Leech and there's Life Leech. I used to uh, use Mana Leech. I don't do that anymore. I use a Blood Magic Gem now, but it's still very, very, very good. Uh, and then our main setup is Cyclone, Blood Magic, Ice Nova, Custom Malico, Weapon Elemental Damage. Uh, I feel like this is most optimal for your six six link. Uh, probably an increased AOE would be most optimal. Maybe a conch effect if you're doing like a lot of group play, but I don't think like it's necessary. If you can pick up a Doriani's Catalyst, your DPS is always going to be very much sufficient. Uh, but yeah, 19 gems. Uh, the Cyclone you level until level five because level six gives another. Uh, it makes it so that it costs uh, 6 mana, as opposite to uh, to 5 mana, I think it's 5 and 6, but like, don't level it past 5, it only increases the physical damage since Cyclone got changed and actually nerfed quite heavily when it comes to the elemental portion of the of the damage, but it didn't, you know, the build's still crazy, so, uh, you know, whatever. But we don't get affected by the physical too much, so we don't want to over level our gem. Uh, using Blood Magic you can kind of do it if you pick up a Dorianis, because a Dorianis just has a lot of physical damage, but, you know, it's it's kind of up to you. It, it uh, If you don't play it right, you can see, you can drop your life really, really, really fast, or you can do this and then you don't drop your life at all. But you gotta play it right, uh, just to keep it safe, I've decided not to level it, because I don't have that Dorianis. And then your typical Enduring Cry, Increased Duration, Immortal Call, Cast and Damage Taken set up. I'm keeping it at level 1, actually this probably was a mistake. I like to level my gems uh, until like level 10 or so. Uh, but considering the life pool, I've just, I don't know, I never bothered with it. Uh, flasks, uh, definitely need a grounding because we're using a lightning coil. If you get critted, you get shocked, pretty big deal. Make sure you have... Uh, you have a uh, shock flask. Actually, you should switch these up. Uh, and then staunching. Everyone needs a staunching. No questions there. We don't need an anti freeze uh, flask because we've got an alpha sal. Azri's promise. Great for dealing with reflect. Uh, great for damage boosting. Again, especially with the Dorianis. And then. Uh... Oh, yeah, and it gives leech too. So that's like a base leech that it's really useful. The cyclone just works really well with leech. And then uh, a Jade Flask, not too well rolled Jade Flask, but a Jade Flask is a Jade Flask, gives us a lot of evasion. Really, really helpful. And then a Quicksilver of Warding. Again, another necessary thing since we don't have uh, Warding on any other of our flasks. Something like this is just really, really, really freaking good. Uh, my belt is actually really, really good. Uh, but yeah. Uh, my rings, uh, really bad ring, uh, really average ring, below average I would say, and then really, really bad amulet as well, but you use what you got, you know, this character uh, doesn't require a lot of money, you don't have to use the lightning hole, you don't necessarily have to use the alpha sal even, uh, and again, these are dirt cheap, so very, very much a budget build. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. The Tooltip DPS is 7k right now, again I respect that of Inner Force and I respect that of Berserking to be able to do this route and go around here. I wish there was a way to not travel up here and not travel over here to keep it efficient, but just for keeping this build alive, uh, that's what I've decided to do. Uh, it makes it extremely tanky, so I feel like it's worth it and the damage is never lacking, so, you know, no... Uh, no biggie there. This character actually did end up dying. I'm sadly in standard league. I wasn't looking at my screen and I hit a reflect pack uh, in like a six man group, five man or six man group. Uh, I never found the need to pick up Volpact uh, before then because the mobs just didn't have enough life and I had enough mitigation. But I've decided to uh, join a Untainted Paradise and there was a, you know, reflect devourer or monkey and I wasn't looking at my screen at all. I was reading chat and just. Blow myself up. Obviously my fault, but it doesn't it doesn't prove that there's any like sort of flaw in the build when it comes to the defense. Uh, but yeah, let's let's run a map. This is a rare monsters map, uh, kind of to display uh, the single target, because that's a concern for a lot of people. And then monsters deal extra lightning damage, so a pretty dangerous map altogether. But hopefully uh, we're gonna we're gonna do fine.
So, you essentially cyclone through stuff. Uh, this is a 74 map. Oh, man, avians. This is a 74 map, so not uh, top of the line when it comes to maps. But uh, still a pretty proper display considering the budgeted gear and uh, level 87 character, I would say. Uh, it's still laggy at times, but not as bad as it used to be. And really, what we want to do is get our vol haste, uh, find some mobs, pop our vol haste, and and just destroy, right? Oh, seems like there's some desync and seem to OS, and just try and spin through everything as fast as possible. I don't know why I'm getting some weird desync. Maybe my girlfriend's downloading something, but uh. Altogether, Cyclone is a pretty, pretty amazing skill. Like I said, the clear speed, as you can see, is pretty crazy. Like, considering it's a melee skill, it's pretty crazy uh, clear speed. But, uh, the build, the build, uh, oh, and there we go. There's a reflect back. Like, even this is without me using any pots or anything like that. You can really hold your own against reflect, at least when it comes to the uh, gnome groups. If you were to play in a group, uh, I highly recommend picking up Volpac, and then you shouldn't have any reflect problems at all. Um, but, you know, I never did that. My bad, I guess. The Arrow Device, uh, I mean, the Herald of Thunder, pretty efficiently curses everything. And we can just, uh, you know, we can just cyclone through. It's really all we need. I tend to forget to use. Uh, Ball haste. Um, I don't know. I'm just. I always. I'm always scared that I'm gonna waste it. But uh, you know, you should really use it as often as possible. There's a blue pack. A little bit of lack of an AOE is kind of annoying. But if you can get a prismatic eclipse with bigger amounts of AOE, it's just really, really, really freaking worth it. And again. Just a straight up damage boost to Ice Nova and uh, and uh, our Cyclone would be a Dorianis. You can even go crazy and do uh, something special, which would be. Uh, let me just clear up these mobs so I can show you. Which would be uh, going down here and picking up Skull Cracking. We stun, we do all this kind of crazy stuff a lot. So, you know, if you if you can call with your uh, Cyclone, that's really most optimal. Because sometimes your Ice Nova is going to be the one killing the mobs. That's why we're using an Ice Nova and not, for instance, something like an Arc. Because Ice Nova is delayed. It spreads out. It doesn't hit the mobs instantly. And it still increases the damage as it re reaches the mob. However... It doesn't, you know, it doesn't necessarily kill everything, it just increases the width of, uh, of, uh, I guess our character, kind of. Because you really gotta treat this build like some sort of, uh, wow, I did not just find this, okay. But <laughs> this is the second card that I found in Standard, making these videos, oh boy. Alright. <laughs> That's really discouraging. So it really it really helps with the with the clear speed a lot in those aspects. But uh you might notice that even though it's lightning damage, really almost nothing ever hits me. That was why I made like a big decision to go for evasion. Because uh The way the way Cyclone works is that it uh it stuns a lot because you hit the mobs a lot. This guy always takes me forever to kill actually for some reason. He's just very resistant to elements. But uh you st you stun a lot and then you freeze a lot because you've got 10% chance to freeze and then the ice nova freezes, you know. And the same works with sh for shock and uh and and ignites. So the the mob is always affected by the status ailment and it just makes it really really safe if you freeze and the uh, and uh, stun and then chill. 
chill mobs a lot. It just makes it really, really freaking safe. Uh, let me just run another map. The feeble maybe not necessarily, but uh, there was something else that I wanted to explain. Oh, come on. I don't really have... Uh, you know, well, whatever. Let's just run another map to display. But you can see that, you know, it pretty much uh, breezed through the content. Sorry about the selling. It's just what I'm used to. <laughs> you pretty much breeze through the content. And it just makes it really, really safe. It makes it really safe, safe for, uh, like, party play as well. Because of that fact. Oh, there we go. There's some roas. Maybe that's going to be a little bit more difficult. And some golems. And some leapers. Actually, leapers are one of the few things that are just really annoying with this build uh, at times. Because uh, they jump over your cyclone. So you can't... Like, if you spin onto a pack of roas, most certainly you, are e you will either freeze them or stun them before they hit you. So it's, uh, it's not scary at all. But, uh, damn. But, uh, I'm getting, I'm getting the items. But it's not the case for leapers, so leapers are actually quite frustrating. But, in no way are they a danger to your character. But again, the big decision uh, for evasion was the fact that not many things hit us, so our entropy can constantly reset. And, uh... I don't know, it just makes for a really, really, really freaking tanky character. Constantly, constantly leeching tremendous amounts of deeps. You gotta remember that we're using blood magic, right? So we're losing a lot of life as we as we do these spins, but just the amount of leech that we get is, is so huge. On top of it, the endurance charges and the leech from... Uh, from... Uh, Warlord's Mark is just crazy, crazy. I keep repeating myself because I'm trying to remember... Uh, what I was trying to say, but I can't really remember whatsoever. That's kind of a problem. But, uh, you know, if you're doing this on a different league than a, you know, beginning of a challenger league, you can you can really go crazy with some, uh, with some gear options and really make this build shine even more. Because right now, uh, to my surprise, it's, it's viable for group play. I thought, I thought the, uh, the real problem for the build is going to be group play, right? Because you think about it, cast the mellow kill build, you know. I was thinking maybe I'm going to need to use a calling strike, maybe I'm going to need to use this and that. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, will he point me? Oh, it's in the back. Whatever. We're not going to do that. But uh, just the overkill amount of damage that we do uh, is definitely enough. But if you're doing heavy, heavy group play, I don't know. You might want to pick up uh, that calling strike. Might go want to go with like just a straight up uh, LA Cyclone setup. It's completely up to you. Uh, I found that this worked perfectly fine in groups. Again, to my surprise, because I don't know the on paper idea. It shouldn't it shouldn't work too well, but just the amount of damage that it does is crazy. And again, this is without an offensive curse. So I don't know. Maybe in the future I'll use a single curse and then like. Use elemental weakness and uh, there we go. There's reflect. Let's see, like reflect really doesn't hurt us at all. Uh, and then maybe just use a life leech gem on our six tank, something like that. Uh, there were a lot of a lot of things because okay, because some people maybe don't want to go evasion. So here's like the really tiny stuff that really needed a lot of thought and really what made the build work. Uh, you can run this on mana. Uh, you don't have to use it like this. I used to run Herald of Ash and not run a Grace and not have these notes and just run it on mana. I was using Mana Leech at the time. However, I did do uh, some calculations and, well, calculations and actually tested it. And if you were to have 2%. Why is he running away? If you were to have 2% mana leech and use a Doriani's Catalyst, you actually have enough physical damage to sustain your Cyclone entirely. Um, which is really amazing. But then you're left with Arrow of Ash and not using a Grace. So I see. I, I feel like this is a setup more for a... Uh, um, you know, standard softcore league. Because you can still keep the build very safe and very tanky without the evasion, but... 
you know, having that extra buffer is always, always really, really, really helpful. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I feel like that's mostly what I covered. There's really a lot of options, so if you want to experiment with the build when it comes to, like, not picking up uh, Master of the Arena, when it comes to not picking up these auras and not taking Grace, when it comes to going through the top, picking up the AoE, going through the middle, and then pick up, uh, picking up Ash, Frost, and Storm in the Inner Force, there's a lot of options. It honestly runs down to personal preference. This is what I found to work, you know, works best for me, personally. But you can really do, uh, do what you want. Deciding on the exact pathing on the build was very, very, very difficult because there's so little difference to it. But yet, it makes the biggest difference when it comes to min-maxing. So, just keep that in mind. Sorry my character looks terrible without any MTXs. And I feel I feel like that's everything. Capt resists. Um, defenses are explained. The damage is explained. Yeah, I think we're done here. So, hope you found this uh, helpful. Hope you found this informative. I'm definitely going to go back to this build at some point because... Uh, Wow, <laughs> I was just so surprised by how well this worked, and especially in the beginning of a league where everything's so budget, you can really, really get some crazy clear speed going compared to uh, other builds, especially melee builds, but just in general, uh, other builds. So I'll definitely revisit this build next league. But, uh, oh yeah, and if you want to do a Ziri with it, one last thing, if you want to do a Ziri with it, because that was what I was planning to just run at Ziri when I pick up this evasion, you can always use... Uh, LA Spectral Throw and just kill it Ziri that way. I wouldn't recommend using Cyclone, but LASD is pretty much... Well, it's very similar to what we're using here. A little bit of respecking is just perfect, and you can just run at Ziri. That was my plan, but sadly, uh, I didn't make it there. But, uh, yeah, again, thanks a lot for watching. Hope you found this, uh, you found this helpful. It's a 22 goddamn minute video, but, uh, you know, maybe somebody's gonna appreciate it. Maybe it's not gonna be too long for somebody. Uh, okay, finally, thanks a lot, thanks for watching, and uh, hope you guys visit the live stream, and if you have any questions, be sure to visit the live stream and ask the questions there, because uh, that's just easiest for me, and hopefully easiest for you, so, we'll see you guys later, bye bye!